Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update of my chili plants here. So in the previous video I think I was giving them a hard prune. Well since then what's happened is I've moved house, the Covid lockdown has happened so it's been quite difficult to look after these plants as I've been stuck at my parents and these plants have been over at my new house. So but these are what survived, so the Knetta was the only one that didn't survive. And interestingly, I've got, I gave one of the Knetta plants to my friend last year, and his one is also really struggling to come back. But the, the Apache's done really well, and the one that was uh, a suspected Apache has also done well. And you can see they are struggling a little bit, especially this one here. The Apache, though, is starting to re-sprout, and we have actually got chilies for me already, so you can see there's two nice ones there. There's another one down here. The growth isn't that strong, and that's because I think it's still in last year's compost. Same with this one, although this one it could be slightly to do with the genetics. It seems that some varieties of chilies respond really well to being overwintered and then cut back hard. Other ones don't respond quite as well. The Piri Piri though is looking absolutely fantastic. It's put on a huge amount of growth and it's actually going to start branching out soon and then start flowering as well. So that will start cropping later in the year. I find the Piri Piri always is a later flowering plant, always later cropping. But it is a much larger plant. It's not a dwarf chili like the other types. So with these two as I say, they were kind of struggling in my conservatory. There was a touch of frost, but they, all these plants seem to survive the touch of frost. I think it was probably when these leaves were out, you can see there's a bit of damage on those leaves. That could be a nutrient deficiency, but that is round about the time where you had the frost. So that, that might be what that is. But there was a bit of frost damage to some of the plants. Chilies seem to come through with that without, any, without too much problem. And the reason they got frost damage is they're in an unheated conservatory. I had an electric heater on, but the electric heater just wasn't quite hot enough for when it got really cold. We had about minus four, and uh, it probably got down to about minus one or just below zero in the, in the conservatory itself. So that damaged quite a few plants, and I'll give you guys an update on that when I can. So in this video, I'm also going to be introducing you to a lot of new peppers and aubergines as well that I'm going to be looking after this year. So all the ones I'm going to show you today are ones that will be growing in my conservatory, more, more a bit like growing in a ho at home or on a windowsill. Whereas the other pepper plants I've got, they're already out in the, in the greenhouse and there's some, also some aubergines in the polytunnel and there'll also be some other sweet peppers coming into the polytunnel soon as well. But for this video I'm just really focusing more on the house plants kind of side of things, so it's the indoor grown peppers. So I'll get going now and I'll show you all the other ones, there's quite a, a few to show. Um, but I'll just show you a few of them and uh, basically I'm putting them all up today and refreshing the soil on some of the of last year's plants to make sure that they get some better soil. These two are Apache. They're, all, they're both dwarf, so they don't need big pots. These are in two litre pots right now, which is plenty big enough. They're nice compact plants. They produce lots and lots of peppers, so it's a really good crop for a small space. So they're fine in a smaller pot. And Piri Piri here has always been in a slightly larger pot. This one's just over two litres, I think. But um, it could really do with a bigger pot. It's a large chilli plant. So I'm putting that in a larger pot. And all the other peppers I've got at the moment for inside my conservatory are a variety called King of the North. They're a variety that is well suited for growing in northern uh, northern climates, so they're supposed to be early maturing and they're supposed to be quite tolerant of cooler temperatures. And I'm also trying to grow some aubergines this year as a bit of a challenge. Aubergines tend to be quite difficult to grow in Scotland because they need high temperatures and lots of light. So hopefully I'll, I'll get a crop out of them. I've grown them previously, but the flowers have never really set properly, I think, because they didn't have a long enough growing season. So all these new plants I'll be showing you, I actually started them off in January under grow lamps. They were grown in grow lamps probably until March. Then they were put in the conservatory where just after I put the heating system into the new house. So I was able to keep them about 16, 20 degrees during the, at night time. But they were getting up to about 30, 35 degrees during the day. So they've grown really well and they're all ready for planting on. And um, the variety of the aubergine I've got is Black Beauty, which is a quite an old uh, traditional variety. Just really big purple fruits that you see often in the supermarkets here in the UK. So this here are my, my two largest of the, um, the sweet pepper and the aubergine. Um, the sticks here are just some, uh, some old willow canes I had and I put in the ground to keep them upright. They have started to sprout as well. So these were grown in a mixture of multi-purpose compost and some compost from my parents' garden, which is why there's quite a few weeds coming up. But they seem to have really enjoyed that. Now the aubergine, it did seem to suffer a bit more in the heat, which I was quite surprised because these are supposed to be native to more like a, of a desert climate. Um, but they seem to have recovered a bit now. There was a bit of scorching on the leaves when they first went into the conservatory because the light levels were so much more intense than the grow lamps that I have. But the new leaves seem to be coming through fine. And there's a quite a nice flower bud starting on this one here. You can see it 
it's just down there. The, the aubergines actually have really big flowers, way bigger than any kind of chili plant or, or pepper plant flowers. And they're really nice when they do open. So I'm quite looking forward to that seeing that opening up. Not sure if that will set fruit. I think the first lot of flowers generally don't set very well. It'll be later in the summer till I actually get any fruit. I'm not really expecting fruit till July or August. But I'm quite happy that I've managed to get the plants this size already. And so they should be a really big size by the end of summer. And aubergines are generally quite big plants. They grow about four or five foot tall. They're basically small shrubs. Um, so I'm expecting this to get pretty big by the end of summer and hopefully get a good harvest of aubergines. I've also got some in the polytunnel, so it'll be interesting to see how they do. But the plants in the polytunnel, they weren't kept under grow lamps from January. They were only sown, I think, kind of February, March time. They weren't grown under grow lamps. They were just with the natural light. So they're a lot smaller right now. It'll be interesting to see how they compare with my other sweet peppers and my other aubergines. But here's the king of the north pepper, as you can see. Really big lush leaves, doing really well right now. It's also started to flower and branch as it normally does. Most peppers and chilies as well, they grow up. As soon as, they set, as soon as they have their first flower, they then start branching and then they just continuously branch and continuously flower and crop. So there's nothing, there's nothing um, on this yet, this set seed, but uh, we've got quite a few, this is the first flower and there's loads of flowers coming. So I'm hoping these are gonna set seed quite soon. I'll just do the, the usual finger pollinating where I just tap the flowers to make sure they've all been pollinated because I'm not expecting any um, pollinating insects inside the conservatory. But this is the best plant I think I have at the moment. But once I've potted them all up, I'll give you a photo, I'll show you a photograph at the end of the video so you can see all the different plants and see how they're looking. But generally this is the, this is about the largest out of the group of plants I have. So I've got six plants in total, four sweet peppers and four aubergines. And then I've got those three chili plants as well to be potting up today. So the soil mix I'm going to be using for these plants will be the same for the peppers and the aubergines, like quite a similar type of soil. I've, what I've done is I've mixed rich multi-purpose compost in with a little bit of perlite for drainage, but I've also added um, a bucket or two of my parents' topsoil. The parents have a very sandy loam topsoil, and that seems to really help break up the compost. One of the problems with, with peppers and aubergines is they don't like the soil too wet. They're not like tomatoes, which like a really damp soil. They like the soil quite free drained and they like, to let it, they like it to dry out ever so slightly in between watering, but never fully dry out. So what I've done to, to get that is I've, if I've added quite a bit of perlite and the, and the loamy topsoil. I find this loamy topsoil really stops the, the compost from really sticking together. I think all the grains up from the sand and from the loam coat the outside of the compost particles and then that really seems to stop them from sticking together. You get this nice loose soil, it doesn't compact as easy and doesn't get really wet and claggy like some, top, like some compost can. So I could also add a bit more perlite to this but I think this should be enough with all the, um, the topsoil I put in. There's probably only about one eighth topsoil. Most of it is rich multi-purpose compost. Normally I do put a lot more perlite in my mixes for my peppers but using, I'm kind of using my parents' topsoil as a substitute to that because it will help break up the soil. Also, I also find it good to put a bit of loamy compost into, into multi-purpose anyway because a lot of multi-purpose compost, especially if they're peat-based or coir-based, once they get really dry, they don't tend to get wet easily again when you water them. But a little bit of loam mixed in with a multi-purpose compost really seems to help with that. So with these two chilies, my plan is just to treat them in the way that I normally treat my chili plants after they've re-sprouted. So what I often do most years is I cut them really, I cut them back really hard. Once I start putting on some growth, I then start trimming the roots and uh, give them some new compost that reinvigorates them. Otherwise, the compost just gets stale and they really struggle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to loosen off any of the old compost that isn't attached to the roots. And then, and then trim any long roots which look like they might be too woody and replace this with nice fresh compost. That will really help the plant out and should grow a lot better because of it. This is quite stressful for the plant, so it will, it will, um, its growth will be slowed down for a little bit. But once it gets going and puts its roots into the new compost, it will grow all the better for it. So I just basically cutting all these long straggly roots off. And what that will do is it will encourage lots of new roots to grow into the new compost and the plant will be much stronger and healthier because of it. So I'm going to do the same again for the Apache pepper here, just replace the soil, put it exactly back in, put it back into its same pot because it doesn't need a bigger pot. The other Piri Piri chili I'm going to put into a larger pot, same with the other plants I've got. So at the moment most of them are in either a two litre pot or a three litre pot, but I'm going to be upgrading them quite a bit this year. I'm going to be putting them in, into a 10 litre pot, which is going to be, give them plenty more growing space than what they've had previously. So 
And this is the size of the pot they're going to be having. It's five times the size of this pot here. Instead of a two litre, it's, ten, it's a 10 litre. That should be enough space for, certainly for the, the sweet peppers. The aubergines, I might upgrade them into a larger pot still. I don't have many pots which are much bigger than this, although I do have a 30 litre pot. I can put one of the aubergines in, which I might upgrade it to in the future. But for now, they're all just going to go into 10 litre pots, see how they do, but I suspect they will need bigger pots later on in the season. So that's now all the pepper and chili plants potted onto much more suitable sized pots and the aubergines as well. So I'll give these a good watering now. I'll also stake them as well and tie them to the stakes because I'll be transporting them over in my van. And with, with the transport, they'll probably get quite quite uh, loose at the roots because they'll wobble quite a bit we're going around corners. And with them being newly repotted, re they're going to be a bit loose in the soil until the roots get established. So I'll stake them up, then transport them back to the conservatory in a couple of days time when I next go over there. I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks. So I'm expecting some really good growth from these. The conservatory gets midday sun and afternoon sun. And depending on where I locate these plants, there's also a bit of late morning sun as well. So the light levels are really good. The temperature is really good because I've got a, a heating system now installed. So these should do really well. Um, I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks time. Um, by, by the looks of things, I'll get some red chilies by then. The Apache here has already got green fruit, so they should be right by the time the next update comes around. Hopefully this one will recover a bit. We'll see how it does. These are going to be in, put in check because I've disturbed the roots. This one should start flowering. I disturbed, disturbed the roots slightly on this, give it some of the old compost, but kept most of the roots, so this won't be put in check too much. This should be flowering. The sweet pepper plants, I should expect some small peppers starting to form on them. Probably just green by the next update, because when you have large bell peppers, they take a long time to ripen up, because they're such big, big, big fruits. It's not like a small chili which grows to full size in a few weeks and ripens within a month. With these large sweet peppers, it tends to be that they grow to full size in about a month or two, and then ripen up another month after that. So it could be two or three months until I get my first ripe pepper. And going over to the aubergines, they're probably going to have some really nice flowers in the not on the next update, but I wouldn't expect any of those flowers to have set yet. Uh, it'll be probably July or August, I reckon, that they'll be setting. I'm expecting some really strong growth from these in the next month or so, so I think uh, it'll probably be about a month or two until I do the next update, so that'll bring it into June, maybe early July, depends how these progress. But I'm expecting these to probably at least double in size, and we'll start getting some nice fruit. So I'll see you guys with an update in a few months' time.